Hi, I'm Kara Pagreba. Welcome to Bright Hope Creations. Choosing Copic markers can be daunting, both when buying them, but also when using them. So I'm often asked how I choose my colors, and I wanted to share my methods in the hope that you will find this helpful. So these would be my top 50. This is the way I carry my markers around. I use a picnic utensil carrier. So the plates go on one side and the utensils on the other. And this is the one I used for years, but I have a little bigger one now. But I still use this when I have a certain project. I put them the markers I want in here and also the project. I like to carry my markers from room to room or take them to a friend's house or, you know, on the go. So that's why I keep them in something with a good handle I can move around. If I was to start over and if I had to choose 50 markers to start, these are the top Copics I would choose. And it, it's tough because, of course, you know, they're all great, but here's the ones if I only could choose 50. So I would start with the earth tones, and that's how I originally started because I used them for skin tones. And I know that there's other markers out there. I used uh, cheaper ones, but I really wanted good skin. I thought I could paper piece clothes or whatever, watercolor flowers, but for skin, I thought I would like uh, to do those with Copic. So that's how I started. And the E, triple zero and double zero are ones I would definitely get um, because I am pasty white. My family's pasty white. So if I'm going to send them a card that has one of us on there, we're pasty white people. So that's why I would go with those. But also then the E20 family, it's a great blending family and it can also blend as you saw the E21 I put over with the 00 and it can blend in with my skin tones. But this is what I would also use for uh, fur, uh, hair, things like that. That's why I would find these to be the first ones I would want. Second would be the grays. So there's four different grays and I would just pick two. So for me, the cool gray and the warm gray. Grays are good for coloring things that are white, like fur, again, if it's a, a rabbit or something like that. Also, if you don't have all the colors, and you want to show shadow, you still you can do that with a gray. It doesn't have to be the color. Let's say I had a pink uh, shirt and blue pants, and I didn't have the um, didn't have the pink and blue in all the colors, the darker ones. I could use my gray, and then it's shaded. So that's that's a nice thing about the grays. If I had the choice, I would get them all because it's a it's easier to blend when you have all the numbers in the cool and warm gray, but to start, this is what I would do. This, of course, is just my opinion. Uh, this is what works for me. I don't have any formal Copic training. It's just from my experience. So the next group, I'm gonna work my, my way through um, from R, and then we'll go to RV and V, BV, B, we'll go down the line in rainbow order. And so for R's, the reds, I would focus on the 20 group, and R20, see I put up here, also works well for cheeks or lips on skin. So I like R20 for that. But the R20, R22, and 24, that's a nice coral color. So it's kind of a, a nice one for using uh, 
as a different color than red. It's it's kind of a separate color for me. But then going darker, the R27, 29, and then the R59. Now I'm sorry, these are off the page. I didn't realize that was off, but you'll see it when I pull the paper up in a little bit here. But uh, those are those are a nice solid bright red. I use them a lot for a Santa hat, uh, tulips, anything red. When we move on to the red violet, there are a lot of different ways you could go here. I chose the 60s just because it's it blends well and it's it's a real contrast to the R20s in that you can have that peachy coral R20, 22, and then here's a real more of a purpley uh, pink. So the 63, 66, 69. And then next we'll go down to violet and I would not, if I can only pick 50, I wouldn't pick any of the violet. Not because I don't like them, but if I could only have 50, that's not where I'm going to go. And that red-violet kind of makes up a little bit for it. Blue-violet, again, I wouldn't choose any. I, they're not bad. I just, that's not where I would start. I noticed, too, a lot of the violets are dull, and the blue-violets are dull, and I guess I like more of the vibrant colors. So that's my choice. In the blue category, I would definitely get the lightest of the blue, which is a quadruple zero and a triple zero. And then I would get another color family. So in this case, I would go with the B32, 34, and the 37 and 39. The quadruple zero is great for sky and the triple as well and then blended together that's I use that all the time and that's the one if I could only have one refill besides the colorless blender I would go for the quadruple B then here in the the B family the 30s this is nice because it's very different than the other B, the very light ones. And this is good for jeans or blue flowers, anything like that. There are other ones that are good for jeans as well, the 90s, but I would, if I could only do one group, I would do the 30s. In the blue green, I would do BG 10, 11, 13, 15, and 18. And the 10 and 11, you would think, well, the numbers are so close. Why don't you just get the 11? But I found that really having that 10 helps to blend out that color family. Here's the BG 13. It is really different than the 11. I wish there was something in between those two. Here's 15 and then 18. There are a couple of things I want to point out in this BG group, and one is the fact that if you're blending the BG 11 and 13 together, it really does help to put one tip on the other, the lighter onto the dark, and blend out with the lighter. You will get a better blend that way. Another thing here is I would never choose my colors based on the caps. As you can see here, the BG13 cap is darker than the 15. So it's a little confusing that way. They're not all that way, but for the most part, I don't rely on that. All right, into the green category, I would choose the teens because it's a nice, like a, a Kelly green or a grass green. Um, I would not go with the zeros because they are a mintier green and I would gra I gravitate more towards things to use for grass and leaves and uh, 
stems, things like that. So I would choose the teens here. Then with the yellow greens, I would choose two different groups of these because with the green and yellow green, I like to have a couple of different ones so that I can have a variety to show the difference between maybe grass and uh, leaves or uh, a, a variety of leaves. So the YG01 and 03, they're a very nice lime green. And then the 61, 63, and 67 are a little bit grayer of a green, a duller green. So between the G12, 14, 17 group, the zero group, and the 61 group, or the 60s group, this is a nice variety of greens to have. Now in my top 50, I kind of shortchange yellow and the yellow red group and I apologize but for what I grab to use uh, I don't use as much yellow but I, I do use it so this is a nice bright yellow and a blend to the yellow and I can uh, use it for sunshine for centers of flowers flowers themselves things like that then in the yellow red which is pretty much orange I would choose two here as well the 04 and the 68 which seems a little strange but for me this is a nice bright combination this 04 I can also combine over with the yellows if I want and then the 68 is bright as well and it's a little darker so it, it blends nice as well last but not least is the colorless blender and that's zero in Copics and that is an important marker for uh, erasing lines really it pushes the ink so if you go outside the lines that helps push it back in and it also I like it for different techniques Moving on to how I choose color while using them, I rely on these two charts and I use them both. This is the hex chart from Sandy Alna. I'll put a link below of how you can purchase that from her site. It's not expensive and it's extremely helpful. And this is the one that I downloaded from the Copic company. This is also a way that I work on figuring out which colors to use. A lot of the color groups I am now familiar with how they work together because I've used them enough but let's say an, uh, I want to do something in greens that I'm not as familiar with I will color my own swatch of what I have and then see how they blend, see how they look together this way, I know what I'm going to use based on what I have. Not looking at a chart, especially before I had a lot of Copics, a chart showed more white space, and so I didn't really see uh, the color as well. But as you can see here, I'm in the YG0 family, and they show the same, but without the lines in between I get a better idea of what they're going to look like and with the other blends on my color swatch I can see them uh, better together. Now on Sandy's chart too you can see how they go together but if you have a lot of white uh, hexes then you're not looking at what you actually have. Here I'm coming back in and I want to see if that family the zeros blend well together this is a funny family because the top of the family the six and the nine are a greener color whereas the the uh, three and the five are a, a little more yellow so it's a different family but it has its place and I use them 
typically separately more than together. But this, especially when you're starting out, to, to make your own swatches really shows you what you have and you'll use them more than looking at a chart that's mostly blank. It's harder to decide what to use or how to use it. So this shows you how your Copics work together. And one thing that I tell people is when they're saying, well, what should I get next? Look at what you have and go next to that um, on the color chart. So I had zero, zero, YG00 zero, zero for a long time, and I had YG03, but I didn't have zero, 01. So that made a big difference once I filled in that gap. And that's another way those charts help because you see what you're missing. But when you're coloring, it's nice to see what you have. For what you're kind of color with and here i'm just showing how these are more yellow rather than the green at the top now a nice use for this chart is if i'm choosing my colors based on a paper that i want to use for my card i can put it up to the color chart and i could say well this one looks the best to me. Uh, the top ones are a little too bright, the bottom ones are maybe too brown or orange or whatever, but this is my group. So that's kind of how I would choose that. Another thing here is then you can kind of see, well, is there anything else that works well with this? And there are some browns in this paper, so I might look over at the brown tones and say, oh well, the 20s, the E20s look good with this brown. But if I look overall at the papers that I'm going to use, so if I use this paper along with it, well, I think maybe the 70s would work better. It's more of a taupe color or the 40s because they're a little uh, grayer. So it's just a nice way to look at your paper, look at the chart and see what you have that will work the best without having to put down every color next to it, you know, color everything. Also, this has a little red in it. You could use any of those reds because there's just not much and, and I would use whatever I was wanting that red to be to work with it. The hex chart works well when you don't have a good color family. So G21, 24, but also 43 and 61. They all kind of work together and you can see that on the hex chart. I'm going to show you a few examples of how I chose color here. I chose color on this one based on the color of the pattern paper, but also I wanted her shirt to be a little brighter green. Here the colors are straight off the colors I have on the cardstock and the pattern paper. A lot of times I will not have a pattern paper and so this is more dependent on the the green in the front is going to be brighter and lighter than the green in the back. Although I think the green in the back on this card is too predominant. I wish it was a little better of a blend. This is an entirely orange image but there are so many colors in here. There's reds and yellows. There's about four different types of browns, maybe five different browns. On this card, the main thing I wanted to show you was, see that green frog? He needs to pop out or be shown in front of green trees and near green grass. So uh, the choice is to go yellow green with him and go grayer with the ones in behind him. Sometimes I take what I know, like red apples and orange pumpkins, get all that colored first, and then I can come back and decide what cloth, clothing colors are going to be based on what I already know I have. On here, I think this was colored first, and then the choice of the paper came, but it was an easy one. Um, this was obviously dictated by the color of the paper, 
and it's shown in the color blending with the ink, but also on the clothes of the kids to get those colors to match and pop when there's mostly faces. So that's how I choose my Copic colors. I hope you found this video helpful and if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below and if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thanks and have a great day!